is scalability is scalability is scalability right now everybody talks about scalability in your application and your database and so on however how about the architecture how can i make sure that everybody is going to the right path how can i make sure my architecture is wealthy and the video today i will teach you how to make sure that your architecture is scalable Hello everyone, my name is Otavio Santana and if you are a software engineer who wants to achieve more results and be more effective and move your career to the next level, you come to the right place. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe, give your like and of course, give your comments and your thoughts. Especially because my goal is to help you to become an ultimate sophisticated engineer. Every time that I talk about architecture, I usually don't talk about the technology uh, stack, not with more often. The main goal here of scalability is not only the technology itself, but of also the people. Imagine right now that somebody left your organization. We need to make sure that the companies can keep going even if without this person, make it more scalable. Does something happen when I have more people coming? So the main goal of the scalability of the architecture is make sure that everybody is going to the right path. Okay, uh, over here we have four kind of documentation. The first one is the C4 model where you can imagine a Google map of your software architecture. The second one is my take radar where I will mapping and the new technologies that I have. The third one is ADR, architecture and decision records, where the main goal is don't repeat the same mistake twice. So any decision, a documentation, I receive that, and then I will analyze by trade-off. And the last one is a clear communication and forum. Uh, when we talk about C4 model, imagine a house or an architectural house, a plant, okay? The C4 model looks like this. So I have four C. The first one is the context where I put my business perspective, the main goal and so on. The second one is the container. I'm not talking about the Docker container here. It's more about the, the integration between application, database and so on. The third one is my components, okay? Uh, where I put integrations in layers and so on. The last one, the C4 model, we, uh, the C4, we usually don't use, that is the code. So remember, when you talk about documentation, the documentation itself, it is, there is a trade-off. If we don't put documentation, you might go through some go horse way or a blind code design or code perspective. However, when you do over documentation, the documentation become an enemy than an ally. So please pay attention on both situations. Okay? I usually go until you C3. And sometimes, especially when the product is beginning, I go until the C2. Okay? C1 context, C2 container, C3 components, and C4 code, where we usually don't use the code documentation. The next one is the tech radar, where I do have the technologies view. The idea is to avoid a mix of technology. How? Basically, I, I know a technology I'm using inside my organization, inside my team. This way I know the maturity, the knowledge inside my team and break down the silos of knowledge. For example, my team has a huge knowledge on um, RevTMQ, that is a Java JMS broker. Does it make sense to have another one? Sometimes no. So if I go, I check, okay, they are already using RabbitMQ. 
does not make sense that I decide to use Honey, Honey MQ, for example, because those two have the same goal. The idea here is to avoid the duplicate efforts to achieve the same result. Okay, if the team knows a lot about Rabbit MQ, why should I have two instances of broker inside my organization? So it's happened, it's happened, but it should not be by asnet. You need to make sure that was intentional. The ADR, as I mentioned, we need to know when I have two different products with the same goal. And one thing to record that decision is the architecture decision record, where any strategic decision you be there. Make sure that any decision has a trade-off. So I know the advantage or disadvantage of any kind of decision. Of course, we're gonna do mistakes. It's happened. But the goal here is to avoid the same mistake twice. Okay, let's don't do that because we did that. And also to bring more context inside the technology technology stack. Okay, I went to that decision because of that. I went to that decision because of that. And the last one here is the clear communication. Okay, asynchronous communication must be efficient. So uh, remember right now we are talking more about remote teams where we have team around the globe. We don't need to have a meeting to any kind of decision. So you, we can do documentation, write documentation, have a discuss, dis discussions asynchronously. Yes, the meetings is too important, but when you do have this kind of meetings, please play, pay attention on the meetings notes where we need to have a goal of the meetings, we need to decide what's going on there, and finally the decision on that meeting. Especially because when we talk about the communication in a meeting, we are talking about the stop four, five, seven engineers for one, two, three hours. It needs to make worth to all of the integrants inside our team. And a when we finish that meetings, make sure that we have the deal. So we write down the deal, make sure that everybody read that deal, read that deal, and then move on. Uh, the main goal here is not to talk about technology itself, but the strategy to make sure that everybody's going to the right direction. Make the architecture more scalable. I can talk about several issues that I suffered when I did not have, did this kind of thing. For example, somebody left and this person was the only person who knows a specific technology. Indeed, this person did a product with a unique technology to try to move on to a new company. And when he left, the whole knowledge of that technology left with him or with her. And then uh, two weeks later, he left. We got a huge headache because nobody knows how to solve this kind of issue. Nobody has that knowledge. So pay attention on these minimal details in your organization with documentation. Did you go through any kind of issue like that? Uh, what do you believe is a good documentation architecture? Did you try a CIFO model or not? Please let me know, put your comments and your thoughts here. And of course, if you want to know more about software engineer, and increase your career and become ultimate sophisticated engineer, subscribe to the channel. That's all for today. Bye.